All right, welcome back to our DIY dog training, um, working through force fetch. Today, what we're going to do, I'm going to keep saying I'm going to try to keep it short, but I am going to keep this episode short. We've already done our warm up with Aries, uh, throwing some fun, uh, fun birds around, um, and uh, kind of got him a little bit loose, um, which is important because today we're going to talk about um, more about reading the dog. Um, it's been about a week since I shot the last video. You probably got in four or five sessions in the last week. Took a couple days off. Um, hunting season just finished up, so we had kind of had some stuff going on. Um, I wanted to, to talk about that. Um, one of the things, the changes that I've made is the fun object that I'm using is now a bird. Um, it's a good idea when you're doing this to think about using birds as the, the fun bumper um, because. Um, um, Aries, I would say has been pretty typical here, here, right here, 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 give, um, he's been pretty typical in that if I throw him the fetch stick, he doesn't want to pick it up. He's like, no, 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 I don't want that. Not interested. Okay. The reason for that is the force fetch stick is now associated with pressure. Okay. So he is not so excited about this particular object. And then that's why we, I start this with a different object. So if there's some resentment, um, we want it to be at this stick, not at a bird, not at a regular bumper. Um, he is still happy and the tail's still going. Um, but I wanted to show you um, a little bit of, of some of the resistance he's giving me. I, I keep talking about this, this process being a grind and, and reading your dog. And, and what I want to show you today, I'm gonna, he's, he's going to do something. I'm pretty sure he's going to do something. Um, when we do our first rep that I don't want him to do. And I'm going to show you how to avoid it, okay? Right now in this room, I have these crates over here. Now, Aries doesn't stay in this room. This is not where he sleeps at night. Um, he sleeps in a different uh, different part of the building. Um, but he is probably going to escape ear pressure and run into a crate. Uh, that's because he's telling me, mm, feeling a little uneasy. Um, he's telling me that he's he's feeling tense. He's feeling the pressure. And he, he wants, um, he's going to try to get away from it, okay? Don't be surprised if your dog does something like this. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Here, heel, sit. Okay, now we're going to apply the ear pressure, all right? We're just going to get a little ear pressure here. Fetch. We're going to walk out on, whoop, we dropped. So we reapply the ear pressure. As soon as we drop, we reapply the pressure. Good, good, good. And he goes right into a crate. I don't want him to do that. I want him to come back here to the heel spot. Obviously, he dropped the bumper. That's a mistake. We don't want him to do that. Now, there's a couple of ideas on how do you handle a mistake. This is an example of he is telling me, hey, boss, I'm feeling uneasy here. Okay, so we need to read that. All right. And we need to understand, is he giving me bad effort um, or is he making a mistake or is he feeling uneasy? Is he feeling upset? Okay, this is a sign that he's feeling upset, that he's feeling nervous, right? He's trying to escape by going to a spot that he knows is a safe place because he's obviously thoroughly crate trained, as you've seen in our earlier videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take away that option, okay? I'm not going to punish this. I'm not going to, 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 to force through this. What we're going to do is we're going to take away the option. And that idea is something we're going to do a lot as we go further down the road in his training. If a dog makes a mistake, especially early in the process, right? Instead of, of hammering on the dog or forcing them out of it, what we wanna do is redo the process, but don't give them the opportunity to make the mistake. Take that option away. So the first thing I've done to take that option away is I've uh, simply closed the crates. So now if I go and I walk at heel, good boy, heel, come on. Good. He comes over here and he's looking at the crates. He's shopping the crate like, uh, 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 uh. Okay, he's not feeling good. Okay. So one, he's still thinking about the crate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a leash back on him. Okay. Now I want to show the leash that I'm using here because the leash that I'm using, I, I made this out of uh, a couple of uh, hardware store things. This is paracord. Um, you can find a thousand different videos on how to braid paracord. Um, if you want, and put a little handle on it. Uh, makes for a really nice leash, and it's cheap. 
Um, this is a little uh, spring clip uh, that you can get from any hardware store, Walmart, whatever. Um, they're like three bucks or something. So you can make yourself a pretty nice leash for a couple of bucks. You can actually make a bunch of these. If you're like me, you have a tendency to put them down and forget where you put them, or you've got one in the truck, two in the house, three in the shop. Where do they all go? I don't know, right? But it's nice to have extras of these, okay? So I'm going to take this clip, and the reason why I like this one is I'm going to have my clippy, I'm going to clip onto his leash, and this is just about the right size to fit around my hand, and so it will stay on my hand but not come off. So what this does is it frees up my hand to be able to have my hand loose, but I still have the leash that's dangling down here, okay? So having a leash that lets you do that is pretty helpful. So what I'm going to do now here, heel, sit, good boy. I'm going to go ahead and clip the clip on him as just a flat leash. And so I didn't use it as a slip lead. I simply clipped it on him. So now when we walk out here, it's very clear to him, good boy. He knows, okay, I'm on leash. I'm going to have to stay put. And he didn't even look at the crates, right? So I took away that option, right? And that's an important idea in dog training is, is there's most of the time, most of the time, Early in training, we don't want to give the dog an opportunity to make a mistake. Later on, we'll talk about that. There are situations where we let them decide and then correct them. But at the beginning, we want to, to give them few options as possible to do it wrong, right? So take away wrong options. That's the idea here, okay? So now, if with the, with the little leash on, and again, I've got my hands free here, okay? We're going to go to ear pressure. Catch. Good. Now, that's bad effort. So we reapply the pressure. Okay. Now, a couple things happened there. That was bad effort because he dropped right away. So I immediately reapplied the pressure. Right. And so, and I reapplied the pressure a little bit higher, a little bit more of a pinch. Okay. Because we want him to understand that's bad effort. Okay. That's not avoiding me trying to get away, that's just lazy effort. And that, we give a higher level of correction. Okay, so now we're gonna walk and heel. Good boy, good. Here, heel, sit, good dog. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that if your dog, when your dog drops the bumper at the wrong time, that, and you reapply the pressure, very frequently, you'll see the dog really increase the strength of their grip. Right, so right now he's got a pretty good grip on the bump on the foot stick here, which is good. Good boy. So I'm actually going to touch the stick. I'm going to touch under his face. Good boy. Good. I want to encourage this. A good firm grip. Right. He's not being mouthy. He's holding it still. A lot of times dogs are, they're you know they're moving it around or whatever. At this point he's holding it nicely. I want to encourage uh, encourage this nice good hold. Good boy. Give. Good dog. And there was actually a little bit of resistance when it came out of his mouth. That's what I want to see. I want to see resistance when I pull it out. I want him to understand, let it go, not just, oh, I grabbed it as it was falling out. Right? We want to get into that. And it, it takes time. And usually it's the response to pressure that gives you a nice, firm grip where the dog understands, okay, I'm holding it. I'm keeping hold of it. And then he's going to take it out of my mouth when I let go. All right. Now, once we get the dog doing this and, and we take away the mistakes, okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start taking him, take the bumper, and we want to start putting it farther and farther away. Eventually, we want to be able to take the stick and put it on the ground. Now, I don't think Aries can make it all the way to the ground today. We'll see if we can get close. Um, and, but we want him to understand the stick is not going to be right in front of your face. Right? It's going to be further and further away. Eventually, it's going to be hundreds of yards away. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to reapply the pressure. Right? Good boy. And once he starts to move towards the stick, I'm moving it away, encouraging him to get it. Good boy. Fetch. Good fetch. Good. Good fetch. Here. Heel. Sit. Good dog. And we're getting a nice, clean, polished delivery to hand. You can see how lots and lots of reps are really polishing this mechanism of come all the way to here, sit nicely with it, don't move, 
don't lean on me. Don't mess around with the bumper in your mouth. Just hold the thing. And he's, we, we've, we've got some nice polish going here. That's good. Good. Give. Good dog. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to do one more rep here. Let's see if we can get it all the way down to the ground this time. Good. Good boy. Good. Oh, oh, I bumped it with my knee there. Now that was that was bad luck. Because I bumped with my knee, knocked it out of his mouth when he wasn't expecting it. That was not intentional. Good. Good. Give. Good dog. Good. So I'm moving down to the ground. Now, obviously, we're trying to do this gradually, you know, get further and further away. Now, there is a step in here that's a common fail point. And I want to talk about it because this is what I'm going to be working on for the next week here is there's a big difference for dogs. Let me um, bring the camera up here and show you what I mean. There's a big difference for dogs with putting the, the stick in front of them. Where if we are going to have them pick up the stick here, heel, sit. There's a big difference between the dog picking up the stick here and here. Right there's I shouldn't say that's a big difference. Usually most dogs will go here to here and even all the way to the ground pretty quickly. However, most dogs see a huge difference between fetch this and fetch like this without your hand there. Don't be surprised if your dog really resists when you take your hand off the stick because eventually you want to be able to put the stick down, command fetch and have them pick it up without us being there. And then obviously we're going to move the stick out farther away. Most dogs resist your hand not being there. Because if you think about it, your hand has been attached to the stick the whole time, right? Every time you've had a hold of the stick. So we need to help them understand, no, I need you to fetch the stick wherever the stick is, fetch it, not just because it's attached to my hand, All right? So let's see if we can do one or two more reps here real quick. Are you done grooming yourself? Hmm? Okay, fine. That actually is a good sign that he's feeling comfortable. Good, good boy. Okay, right here. So we're gonna get totally done here. Come on. Fetch. Nope. So there, he he just resisted me. That's okay. We just reapply pressure. Fetch. Good. Good boy. Also, it's pretty common for a dog when they go all the way down to the ground, they go down and they pick it up and they stay down on the ground. Okay, if your dog does that, put your hand under their jaw and lift their head up, okay, because we want them to be confident. We want them to hold their head high. It's a good boy. Good. Good boy. Good. Give. Good dog. Good. That's a good boy. And don't be surprised if you need to give, you know, extra love between these reps. Like I said, you know, we're putting pressure on the dog. We're being demanding of the dog. You know, we're, we're expecting a lot of him. Um, so he may... Maybe it takes some breaks. Give the dog some love. Okay, let's go one more. See if we can get all the way down to the ground again and have a nice clean pickup. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Fetch. Good. Good boy. Good fetch. And we're just going to help him up. Okay, good. Good boy. Good. We're going to take a quick little walk. Heel. Good. Here, heel, sit, good dog, give, good. So that's what we're looking for. So mechanics are making a solid progress here. Um, we've had a few little mistakes. We apply pressure if the dog drops. We take away um, options if there's something we can take away um, that will really help you out. But that's how we get going, our next step on force fetch. So good luck. Thanks for watching.